Yeah, to turn v into a unit vector, all we have to do is divide by the magnitude, which is what we're doing right here. And remember, the magnitude is a length, it's a scalar. So a scalar times a vector, it's parallel, and we know it's going to be positive because it's a square root. So it is going in the same direction as v. But by dividing by its own length, we're making that length 1. Okay, so notice we already knew the dot product was a scalar, the distance is a scalar, but the dot product of itself is equal to the magnitude squared. That's something we're going to use here. Let's draw this above here. I want to draw two vectors with theta in between. So I'm going to complete this, connect these like so. You can do it either way. It works both ways. We can see this is the resultant because we have tip to tail. So this is where it starts and that's where it ends. So this side would have to be, so we can check v plus u minus v. The v's cancel to zero and we get u. That works. Well, I'm going to change this to the lengths of it. So now that we have a triangle with distances, that's what these magnitudes are, I'm going to use the law of cosines. Law of cosine takes the angle opposite and squares it. It's equal to the sum of the squares of the other two, minus two times the magnitude, the length of the other two, cosine theta. Let's multiply this out. Good to see about some properties here. So now we can see this can cancel with that, subtract it from both sides. This can be canceled with that. We also have a minus 2 on both sides, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And we did it. That was our alternate dot product above. And alternately, this is used for a lot, you can solve for cosine of theta. It's the ratio of the dot product divided by the magnitudes. Let's do an example. So right off the bat, since this is negative, we'll plug the negative into our calculator when calculating the inverse cosine. 
but we'll definitely get an angle in quadrant two. It's obtuse when it's negative. If it's positive, you're in quadrant one. So then it'll be acute. So since this is a scalar, we're just taking the absolute value of that scalar. And so the inequality says it's less than or equal to the magnitude of each. So to prove this, again, it's really good to see these proofs because it helps us work with these. It's true for any sine or cosine. We can multiply through by a positive number. I think I'm going to use this one. <laughs> Won't change the inequalities because it's positive. Well, do we recognize this? That's the dot product, the alternate dot product. And if you recall the definition of absolute value, if you have, I'll do it really fast, x in between minus a and a, we have this. So therefore, we have this. Done. QED has been shown. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot.